Here we are looking at the sample boards that have all been slip tested. So uh, what I'll do, I'll just step up to the the first one. I'll try not to walk too too quick. And what we're trying to do is just sort of get a feel for what the slip rating is for each of these types of boards. And then as the slip rating increases, you can get a you can sort of see what's taking place. So this one here. Uh, ended up with a slip rating of P0 and essentially it's just straight epoxy so it's it's relatively smooth even though you can see a ripple texture there. This was also a P0. The difference here is the textured base coat is an epoxy and the top coat is a urethane, a gloss urethane. This ends up a P1, which is typically used in uh, like even shopping centre areas and so forth. Again, we've used a ripple base coat to sort of give us a worst case scenario. And the only difference is we have a urethane with a matting additive um, as the top coat, P1. So this again is the roll coat scenario with the um, with a aluminium oxide put in there, an 80 grit aluminium oxide rolled into the top coat to give us uh, that bit of slip resistance. Now this is called a P2. Also a P2 is the stone look or a resin granite as this particular brand is called and uh, it's a flaking system that produces uh, you know this slight visual ripple but obviously not um, a massive amount of slip resistance the next set of boards is uh, p3 rating so this is now stepping up to the rating required if you have a floor that opens up onto like a street entrance or something like that where water can be walked straight from the road onto the floor. Uh, in this case the P3 this particular board has been achieved by again roll coat base coat as an epoxy base coat a PU with a different type of additive uh, called micro it's a fine powder blend so it, it's obviously got that more jagged profile than the matting agent. This particular flake board, try and hold it still, this particular flake board also achieved a P3. This isn't what I like to do, but the way that it's done is quite typical of garages where they're using the six millimeter or quarter inch flake and they'll scrape it but they won't sand it and by scraping it only you end up with enough texture to to just catch um, to just catch the enough slip resistance when it comes to being wet so technically it's a p3 i'm not a fan of of that style of finish I like to if I'm going to say that something has slip resistance and I normally have a particle in there and added it that is much more controlled these next two boards are on the verge of P4 or P5 they're right at the top end of um, P4 and basically this is achieved with the urethane again uh, the urethane top coat but with an 80 grit and it's sprinkled into it so it's a manual broadcast approach and um, by sprinkling into it at 50 grams per square meter so it's, um, it's it's not a lot in there but it's enough to raise it up to that P4 this is more of a traditional epoxy with a sprinkle and wet back rolled as you can see uh, again that P4 P5 result and we're starting to get to the point where the Australian standard P5 is categorizing everything the same now once it gets above that certain slip test number of 55 it says everything is P5 
and that's what you start to see on these boards so whether we have this epoxy finish with um, different sized aggregates is is not you know is not that relevant to the result I mean here we have a fully saturated heavy duty non-slip that we would use in a commercial kitchen and it's still called a P5 even though it ends up with a an actual test result of 80 compared to 56 so I'll go back and um, I just want to discuss where this all sits it's I think it's kind of interesting how we've done all of these tests and they, they, they get to a certain level but are we actually showing a good representation of what we see in our industry or are these slip tests more to do with traditional floor covering? Here we have P0, very smooth surface, urethane top. P1, P2, starting to see more degrees of slip resistance. P3, P4, larger particles getting more aggressive and P5 is really this is showing you the fully blown full saturated aluminium oxide type and I guess the, the point that I wanted to actually cover was that once you got to that P5 um, you know that was at the bottom end of what we would call industrial or commercial non-slips and we feel in the resin flooring sector that we we deal with a lot of surfaces that are far more aggressive than just that bottom end of p5 and yet everything is called p5 at that point so i guess uh, and i should add the reason why is because like we will look to install a floor in a commercial kitchen i mentioned it before and we need that floor to not just pass a slip test when it's brand new and clean we need it to really pass a slip test when it's used not particularly clean or you know it's been used for a period of time and it's still maintaining its slip resistance so I guess when I'm looking at that P0 to P5 standard I'm starting to challenge whether we've got it too narrow a band for each of the P ratings first and foremost but then also we're missing that top end and the only sort of conclusion that I can draw why it's set up the way it is is because it's more orientated towards traditional floor coverings whether that's timber, tile, vinyl or carpet uh, carpet doesn't really come into slip ratings but whether it's more aimed at that initial uh, or traditional sorry floor finishes and, uh, and in fact we, we need to expand that rating system to include resin flooring as it is a mainstream flooring option. So I'm Resin Jack, I'd love your feedback, tell me what you've learned from doing slip tests and um, as always take care and keep smiling. <laughs>